if we could glean what Joseph did and what Joseph had and we could implement it into our life and we could walk in the same fashion that Joseph did, our lives have to have the blessing of God on them too because we're walking in the integrity of the Lord. Amen? Because we're trying to overcome strongholds in our life and we do that by taking captive every thought. And a lot of, and well, responses, normally we think about it first, don't we? And then we do something. It is said that we, we sin, that churchy word, falling short of God, that we sin by thought, word, and deed. Thought, word, and deed. So we want to take care of that thought. It's not a, tempta- it's not a sin to be tempted, is it? I certainly don't want some of the thoughts coming into my mind, but if I can grasp a hold of them, I can't stop those thoughts from coming in there unless I begin to fill my mind and renew my mind with God's Word. And more and more, as I become into the likeness of, of, of Christ, maybe those thoughts will change. But to be tempted is not a sin. It's where we go with the temptation. I can have a bad attitude in my spirit, But if I bring that attitude forward in a godly way, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because I've taken captive that thought. And so, how is it that Joseph did what he did? I mean, what was Joseph's response? Well, the first response was he trusted God's character. I mean, and just throw you some numbers here. In 39, 21 through 23, and in 40, chapter 40 and verse 8, it said, it mentioned this twice in 39, it mentioned it in verse 40, it said, uh, verse 21, the Lord was with him, with Joseph, and extended kindness to him. And in 23, the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it to prosper. He trusted God's character. God had begun to build some testimony in Joseph. He had some things there. Joseph believed in a God who was not only all wise and all loving, but all powerful. The God he served didn't place his servants in circumstances where the harshness and the unpleasantness was more than he could bear because he bared it. And so Joseph, while he had these dark days, he remembered the blessing of God upon his life. And I I don't think that there's any more promise of God that ministers to us than what comes from his word. What about in Hebrews 13.5 where God says, to us, I will never leave you, nor will I desert you. How about in Hebrews um, or in Deuteronomy uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Deuteronomy 31.6 or Joshua 1.5. God's promise isn't just to be faithful to us like Joseph, but God says, in, uh, if we back up to even Genesis 28.15, he says, Behold, I am with you, and I will keep you wherever you go. It's kind of interesting We just off the cuff picked the psalm to look at today, and that was the message in the psalm, wasn't it? That he was going to be with us on the going and coming. For you Bible study people, you see the Holy Spirit trying to connect stuff even in my inadequacies? Um, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. What did Joseph do in response to God's good character? He responded in faithfulness, didn't he? He's not just uh, sitting in the corner. He's not just there pouting and whining. He doesn't disengage. He's doing good, just as he did when he was a slave. I mean, look at 39.23. The chief, it says, did not supervise anything under Joseph's care. Almost identical to the words that we read that happened in Potiphar, that he is... He had faithful performance. Man, for those that are running businesses, don't you want good employees that that take care of business for you, that do the right thing? Or for us that are called to work for somebody else, we need to do the right thing? I mean, Joseph is setting an example. He's not just sitting around pouting. He's not, you know... He's not angry, he's not bitter, he's not spinning a story, he, he's not abandoning God. Instead, he's in there, he's working. I mean, after what happened to him with Potiphar's wife, you know, I mean, here he was in charge of doing a good job, and then that happened. You know, probably most of us would have said, why do I even need to bother? It doesn't make any difference. 
But Joseph didn't do that. He goes right back to doing the right thing. Because he's walking in faith. I mean, he's not consumed in himself. Psalm 105 says, They bruised Joseph's feet with shackles and that his neck was in iron. Wiersbe says that what Joseph experienced put iron into his soul. Wiersbe goes on to say, When young people avoid suffering, they never develop character. It's interesting that some of this managed to come out today to the study too. We were talking about uh, character. We were talking about sometimes children, you know, we always want everything. But the fact is most people who get everything, they never grow and they're never blessed. The outcome is not favorable. I mean, well, the opposite of that would be, well, gee, if I go through some struggles and if I learn the hard way and if I have to deal with stuff, that something happens with inside of us. When you spend all your allowance at the mall and you have to walk around with, with your friends who are spending money and you don't have any, then maybe next time you learn that you don't need to spend all your money at one time. You need to save a little bit of it. Right? Seems like no matter what we have, it can, can never be enough. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, I go out into the, 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 the world, into the malls and into the things, and watch young people whining about what they don't have or what they need and the arguments that are going on with them. And I'm thinking, man, what have we become? Seems like the more sometimes that we give to people, the more they want. And then you can't help but say, well, the other side of the same coin could be, well, the more I get, maybe the more I want too. Joseph's third response, he remembered God's promise. Last week in 37, we, we remember Joseph's dreams that he had. Remember that got him in trouble with his brothers to begin with. The two dreams of the butler and the baker here were also dreams that he interpreted. I mean, he... Joseph remembered those dreams. He remembered the dreams he interpreted between the butler or the, the excuse me, the cupbearer and the baker and they came true. When Joseph seen that those dreams come true, don't you think that he probably thought about those dreams that he had a long time ago that was going to show that he was going to be in charge, that was going to show that things was going to be different and people were going to be bowed down to bow down to him? God had gave him an insight, probably preparing his heart. If he would just have focused on the promise of God, and I believe Joseph did, he was able to get through the hard time because he had that promise from God that came in that dream. You know, his forefathers were promised by God that their descendants would, would number the, the, the sands on the beach. And they got impatient with God and I mean, the Ishmaelites, where did they come from? Well, from Ishmael. Where did Ishmael come from? Well, from Abraham. What happened to Ishmael? God promised Abraham that he would have a, a, a son and a child and that his descendants would number the earth. And Abraham got impatient with, with God, didn't he? He slept with his handmaiden, Hagar. You remember that story? We'll back up. And, and the way that they would do it is she kind of gave birth over the hands of Sarah, his wife, and that was supposed to in some way make that child his child. He got impatient with God, and that's how Ishmael came to be. But then God fulfilled his promise to Abraham through Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Joseph, God keeps his promises. Joseph recognized God's hand. I mean, in uh, chapter 40, 1 through f uh, 4, you can just make these notes. In verse 8 of 40, in verse 14 of 40, in verse 15 of 40, the chief jailer gave, trusted him and gave him more responsibility. Jacob had his eyes open to the needs of other people. He wasn't wallering in that. He was con 
concerned about the other guys in prison. I mean, the only thing that the story gives us a clue to that Joseph wanted was he just asked to be remembered. But he wasn't. Fifteen years. So we go from 17, 15 years in jail. Some food for thought. Next week the saga is going to continue. I'm going to move forward quick here, here and get our praise team back up. Slide 13, Brian. And Peter would later write, perhaps to help us, when we find ourselves in the waiting room of God like Joseph did, because he was in a waiting room, wasn't he? Next week, we're going to see the rest of the story. We're going to see some good things that begin to happen. I think good things was happening in jail because God was with them and everything Joseph touched was blessed. Everybody that was around Joseph was blessed. Good things was happening because Joseph had the correct responses that he needed. He wasn't angry. He wasn't bitter. He wasn't manipulating the situation. He wasn't just looking out for himself. He didn't forget about his God. He did just the opposite. He had faith in God, and because he had faith in God, and because he knew God's will and trying to be obedient to God, he began to serve other people. And because of his service to other people, good things were happening. And because good things was happening, he was probably able to deal with the circumstances, and he had a peace that surpassed all understanding. But to us, in 2 Peter 3, 9, we need to remember, and it says, and Peter wrote, inspired by the Holy Spirit, God's word to us, God is not slow in keeping his promises as some understand slowness. Sometimes we want to do things, things, something in our time. 